Hello, I'm Dan Jones. Welcome to Interchange. Lots of interesting things to talk about again today. Of course, we'll talk about the presidential race, who's up, who's down, and who's the media darling. We'll talk about the plan by the Milwaukee Area Technical College to offer a free college education to incoming freshmen if they can meet certain requirements. And we'll talk about this weekend's game between the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. Before we get going, let me introduce everybody. Of course, you know longtime newspaper columnist Joel McNally. Kevin Fisher, who spent many years in town as a broadcast journalist, many years after that as a legislative aide. And Avi Lank was a longtime business reporter. And you met Ken Lamke, a longtime political reporter. Rick Horowitz will be along with commentary at the end of the show. All right, let's talk first about the presidential race. Lots of news this week. Scott Walker lays out a plan on exactly what he'll do his first day in office, and he does it in the shadow of Ronald Reagan. Hillary Clinton comes to Milwaukee, spends much of her speech bashing Scott Walker. And Donald Trump remains on top in the polls, even while criticizing the medical skills of Ben Carson and the looks of Carly Fiorina. Nobody predicted a few months ago what the campaigns would look like right now. So let's try to guess what things will look like a few months from now. Ken, how do you see things changing? Uh, it's really impossible to tell. I mean, we've got five months to go before the first votes are cast <laughs> in Iowa, and, uh, and, and you're, you're going to have debates, you're going to have speeches, you're going to have position papers put out there, and, and, and then you will have the, the big advertising campaign start. And I think that's where Walker could revive his chances. He's got good money. And once he starts uh, advertising in Iowa, even though he's down in the, in the preferential polls, his, uh, his favorability rating seems to have held. So that even though he has been deservedly criticized for his campaign gaffes, um, he's, I don't think he's out of it yet. He's, he's, he may be out of it, but he's, there's still time. It, we won't really have any changes until uh, February 1st, the caucuses, then New Hampshire, then mid-March, a bunch of southern primaries. The field of 17 on the Republican side will be down to two or three, I guarantee you, by mid-March. The Democratic side will be down to Hillary and, and Bernie Sanders by, by mid-March. Avi, how do you explain Trump doing so well for so long? Got me. <laughs> you know, I was, I've, I've, been, I've been thinking about it. Um, either, I, I hope that people aren't taking this seriously yet. That would be the only way I could think about it. And you've seen some signs, I think, that the, the more, the more uh, establishment people in both parties are starting to pay a lot more attention to what's going on and, and putting together plan Bs to get people that they find might be more acceptable, more grown up to be uh, presidents of the United States, people who have the great gravitas to do that. Um, I wonder a little bit, I, I, I respect Ken's opinions. He's followed this for a long time, but I, I, I really wonder how the governor, how our governor can revive his campaign. Um, he's reminded me of a guy who works his way all the way up through the minor leagues in baseball and tears up AAA for four or five years to the point where the majors can't resist calling him up. And they call him up and he's a bust. I, I think perhaps what we're finding out is that, that our governor has found his Glass his Peter principle spot by trying to run for president of the United States. And I must say that I find his, you said it yourself, he's trying to, you know, run in the shadow of Ronald Reagan. I find that uh, unfortunate for three reasons, and I'll go from what I think are the, is the least serious to the most serious of them. The least serious of them is Reagan is a college graduate and he wasn't, and, and, and Thompson went—not uh, not Thompson, I'm sorry. <laughs> Walker went to Eureka College outside of Peoria to, to make his last speech and, and lay out <laughs> his positions. That's one thing. Reagan also had a real uh, career in the private sector long before he got into politics. He went out and he—like Kevin, he was an announcer at sporting events. He, he, he was an actor. He got involved in the unions and everything else. And then the third thing is Reagan showed a flexibility of mind. He started out his— his political life as a Democrat, and he saw what was going on and decided that he had to change his views and support the Republicans. I don't think that was a good choice. I'm not saying that. But it does show a certain <laughs> flexibility of mind that Scott Walker has never shown. Scott Walker wants to be president of the Republicans of the United States of America. Kevin, how do you explain Walker going from the top of the polls in Iowa toward to the bottom now? I, well, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, I thought he was... Uh, 
overhandled to the point where we he went out there and played prevent defense. If we, if we can use another sports sure. uh, comparison, well, we're going to talk about the Packers and, later on. Might as well and, start. And you know what happens when you play prevent defense? You get lit up. Um, and and he, he admitted yesterday on the Sean Hannity's program that he played it too safe. And so how, why has he plummeted so far? Because he, he went away from being Scott Walker. He has to if he wants to rejuvenate his campaign. He has to just be himself. Now, I watched every speech he made on C-SPAN or MSNBC or Fox or whatever earlier in the year when he did, as headlines wrote, electrified the crowds. He was on fire. <laughs> and, and now, uh, who's ever consulting with him, who's ever coaching him, has taken away the Scott Walker that we knew back earlier in the year that won three races in four years in a blue state and gained popularity because of his accomplishments and what he did with, with unions and reforms and so forth. And he's talking about all these other things now. And yes, sometimes he's on this side of the issue, sometimes he's on that side of the issue, and, and, and it hasn't played well. So he can bounce back. He is going to have to be himself. What is himself? Spend some money. I explained earlier what he, what he, how he it could be himself. <laughs> so he's got to spend some money, get those ads out, and be the old S Scott Walker. That's what he has to do. And he might have to make some changes in his campaign team and go back to the people that got him elected as governor in the first place. But if the Democrat side has written Scott Walker off, then why does Hillary come to Milwaukee yesterday and spend so much of her time bashing Walker? <laughs> there was a few lines in the speech, and they were pretty good lines. And you're in, in Milwaukee, and then you're in Wisconsin. Why wouldn't you talk about Scott Walker? I don't recognize anything Kevin just said. <laughs> uh, yeah, Scott Walker won elections here in Wisconsin. I do not remember the Scott Walker who electrified crowds. I'm sorry. In fact, that's been kind of his political appeal, is he is this amiable, low-key persona bland, almost intentionally bland in public, and that blandness covers up just some reprehensible ideas, some far-right extreme ideas. And he's been able to sell far-right extreme by acting like a bland, boring guy. And, and you can get elected in Wisconsin doing that, apparently, in an off year, not during the presidential year, I'm sorry to say. But, but now let me finish. The other thing is, his, his campaign, even in the national media, has been based on a fraudulent premise. Well, two fraudulent premises, actually. One, I've read all over the national media from the time he started running that this is a guy who's acceptable not only to the right wing, but to establishment Republicans. Yeah, I think moderate, so. moderate establishment Republicans. There, and they and the national media would even say things like, well, now he's like getting really right wing because he wants to win in Iowa, and Iowa's got a lot of evangelical voters. We in Wisconsin know you can't get more right wing than, than Scott Walker. He is not a moderate Republican. He is a right wing mm -hmm. extreme Republican. He sells it with a bland persona, but he is an extremist. And and the only reason an establishment Republican could support him would be they don't really know who who he is yet, because they never, you know, they don't pay attention to Wisconsin, they don't know what really what's going on. But the idea that, look, I'm a good candidate for president because when I took over as governor, I made half of my state hate me. And, and I really made people angry all over the state, and they tried to recall me, but because it was a, a recall election in an off year, I won. Uh, and so what? Uh, you know, he, 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 actually, he actually wrote an article the other day saying that Barack Obama is a divider, not a uniter. And the biggest divider in this state is Scott Walker, and, and that, that is just a fraudulent premise to run for president. Well, we've, got our still, weekly, still... we've got our weekly Walker bash party going on well, here. Well, you got your Let weekly me just Walker say loving that it's, party. It's not just Scott Walker. Uh, the others have been caught up in Trump mania, too, and they have plummeted to the point Not where, the way Scott Walker has. Well, uh, you've only got a couple of people uh, that are uh, at the, the top tier right now. And he ain't uh, and, it. And, and they are Trump. All right? Ben Carson, Carly Fiorina. Common thread there. They're the outsiders. They are not the people who have held political office. And that's 
the appeal. Now, now, can Scott Walker bounce back? Yeah, I think he's got time. Uh, yeah, there's a, pl a, a great amount of time. The question is, is the, is the deficit too big for him to over? And, 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 and does he have any credibility to do that since he's flopped around all over the place? Because as Ken Lamke pointed out, he's got 62% favorability in Iowa, which is, which is <laughs> the untold He's story. also got 3% of can the support. Can I ask you a question, though? You're not the moderator. No, but I'm going <laughs> to ask you a question anyway. Why in the world would the American people want to elect a president who says on the first day in office what he's going to do is, quote, wreck havoc? <laughs> I, I, I'm asking because that as a serious what, question. Because that's what needs to be done. The question, the question is, what, what are the Republicans going to nominate, not are the American people going to elect? Everything they're saying now, obviously, yeah. is for the, get the extremes of their, their party. All right, it's the next, same in the Democratic side. Next topic. The Milwaukee Area Technical College made a big splash this week when it announced a new program which will let new low-income freshmen attend tuition-free next year if they can meet certain academic guidelines and attendance requirements. President Obama has been pushing to make all community colleges free for everybody. Is a college education something which should be free, or is it something that you will only value if you have to pay for it? Well, this is, we're talking about a very limited uh, uh, subject here. I mean, we're talking about community colleges, two years uh, of uh, college. Uh, Obama's uh, proposal is a, a Nationwide proposal it hasn't there. I don't think there's even a bill yet. He's just been talking about it. It's modeled on what started in Tennessee, uh, and the MATC program is an even. It strikes me as a, a much smaller private uh, pilot uh, program. Uh, it's hard uh, to, to get exact about what's involved. I've read a couple different uh, news reports on it, but it it, it appears it's going to serve at the most a thousand people. Well. You know, that's relatively small potatoes in MATC's world. There's uh, 55,000 enrollment in MATC, half of it here downtown, and the other half spread around the suburban campuses. And this would be 1,000 uh, additional slots for, for high school students. And the amount of money that would be provided to them, again, trying to interpret the numbers I saw, it looks like a few hundred dollars. Uh, be somewhere between 350 and 750 a year per student to supplement what they can already put in with loans and 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 their own money so uh, this is not a a game changer here at MATC it's it's a it, it, it's an interesting pilot and it, it might make a difference uh, to in in the lives of, of a small number of kids probably worth a try you can go to a public elementary school for free all eight years. You can go to a public high school for free all four years. Should you be able to go to college for free as well? I, you certainly have to be able to go to college in this country. And the, the model that college education is turning into is unsustainable. You can't have all of our kids graduate uh, from high school and need a college education to get employment and need to graduate from college with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Well, you've said that before. That, that is not a good figure. The average student with debt is $25,000. But, 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 and, but and I don't want to graduate with $25,000 in debt. But okay, let me, but, but, but don't argue. Let's, but, but as a matter of fact, I, of I've had students who told me they were into getting into the... That's not right. But well, as a matter of fact, it is. No. And, and that's... But the thing is, uh, you know, we've got to do something about it. You can't, that is, kids can, they need college educations and they need access to college education and everybody does, not just the wealthy and that's what it's turning into. And Hillary Clinton said yesterday, wasn't reported, but here's what, I, I, and it kind of boggled my mind when she said it. You know that interest rates in this country right now are at, at an all time low and we can finance our cars for a couple percent interest. We can refinance our homes, and people do all the time to get down to the lowest interest rates in history. And the only people in this country who can't refinance loans are college students. College loans are at eight or nine percent, and that's ridiculous in this day and age when interest rates are so low. At least let them refinance. There, and there's, okay? actually, there's something and, beyond and, that, and, too. And, and, in fact, people need college educations uh -huh. and need access, and everybody does. Let's recognize that and consider higher education an important 
access to education, an important thing for our economy, to give people the access to good jobs and to make good jobs, and quit acting like it's only something that, well, I worked hard and I paid for my kids, and I don't want anybody else getting a free college education. I want everybody getting a free college education. We're not going to get there right away, but we should start <clears throat> moving in that direction well, to give everybody access to college. Well, we only have more people who can graduate from college if we pay them to go? Well, let's get back to the topic here, and that's this METC program, okay? <laughs> which I, I kind of like, all right? Um, uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, it's privately funded. At first, I was concerned about this, but yeah. it's privately funded, so that's, that's good news. Um, and this, this concept, this overall theme that's permeated high schools all across America is that we should train everybody to go to college, I think is flawed, because not everybody is suited for college. They're just not. They'll make more and, money if and they do. They will, and I don't disagree with that. And because we've taken this approach that everybody should be trained to go to college, we have dumped vocational training. We have dumped shop. We have dumped classes about trades. I was stunned to read uh, that the average age of a student here at MATC is 30. Kids out of high school are not coming to MATC, so they're not they're not learning trades that would get them into highly skilled, highly technical jobs. And we've got to find a way to get them to want to go into manufacturing, but it's not sexy enough and it's not being taught in high schools. So kids are not, when they graduate from high school, are not coming to places like METC. So I'm all for this kind of program, <laughs> a small pilot that will get these kids because there is, there is a skills gap and we do need those kids to be going into jobs, manufacturing jobs, that will pay them more than if they just went to high school and then stopped going to school. Could it be a game changer for MATC, Avi? I hope so. I, 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 there's interesting things that everybody's said here. Joel is right. I agree with him. College education should be free in the United States, period. And the federal government could start to find money to do that by stopping subsidizing for-profit higher education schools. I'd vote for that. All right, you'd vote for that too. Now, the, the second thing is, there, you know, Kevin, Kevin is right that there are there, and I, Kevin is right that there, that there need to be more skilled. It's not a shocker, okay? <laughs> it's really not. There need to be more. But thank you anyway. <laughs> You're welcome. There need to be more more skilled tradespeople in this in this in this city in the community. A good capitalist answer to that would be to pay them more and to respect them more and to let them have better rights on the jobs like having strong unions. Um, one reason that, that, that a, a person might not want to go into a trade or go to work in a factory is that you're much more likely to be laid off doing that than you are getting a white collar job. So I think all of that needs to be thought about. Um, but the, and, and I would like to add one more thing to what Joel said about student debt. You can, I think your numbers are right, Ken, on, on average, but you know, there's people with lots and there's people with very little. Mostly but the, but there's, one other, there's one other real anvil about student debt that I had a lot of experience with when I was doing uh, credit card counseling with people after I left the paper. Yeah. And that is that, except in extremely unusual circumstances, you cannot get out of it in bankruptcy. Yeah. And you know, so we have we have loans that we're telling people if you want to higher education, you've got to take a loan that pays a, a, a market rate that's much higher than than most other loans, justified by the lenders because the loans are more risky. But you can't get rid of them in bankruptcy, and loans that you can discharge in bankruptcy have much lower interest rates. There's some if if, if capitalism is how you want to regulate all of this, there's some really really thi really interesting things you can't quite explain in capitalism. And the final thing I would like to say, if you want to believe in capitalism and you want to believe in private funds taking care of all of yeah. this, if a business needs employees, let it train them themselves. Right. And that's fine, but uh, student loan debt, can we all agree, it is one of the most serious economic crises in America right now that is just underreported and not being taken as seriously as it should be. In total, it's I a agree. big number, but per individual, it's been vastly overstated what what the what the obligation. Yeah, but, but you got to remember with that average, you know, you can you can drown in a, in a bathtub with right. four inches of water average, four inches of water in it, because there's a lot at one end and not a lot at the other. All right.
Let's talk for just a few minutes about the upcoming Packers Bears game. A new coach in Chicago, an old coach in Green Bay. The Packers have Aaron Rodgers. The Bears have Jay Cutler. Most people assume the <laughs> Packers. End of story right there. <laughs> most people assume the Packers will win even without Jordy Nelson. Any chance, Kevin, that the Bears will pull off an upset? Well, if you talk to TV analysts, radio analysts, newspaper analysts, they will tell you this, you know, on any given Sunday, and it's the oldest rivalry in football. What happened to Serena Williams today? And, and it is the season opener, and the Bears have a new coach. Uh, I think even given all of that, it's a quarterback-driven league. You have... You have Aaron Rodgers and you have Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler, when he throws two interceptions a game, which he is prone to do quite often, he's on the losing side of the score. And the, the, the Bears are messed up. They really are. They, they've, they've got new defensive lines and new, new coaching schemes. And I don't see the Packers losing, even if it is on the road. Uh, they just have... Better talent. They have, uh, and, and the coach, the new coach of the of, of uh, the Bears is a good one. John Fox, very, uh, very talented veteran guy. But the, the Packers all around, even without Jordy Nelson, they picked up James Jones this week. Uh, they have other talented receivers. They can run the ball. Uh, and I think, given the fact that we've beaten them 17 out of the last 21 games, I think the odds, especially <laughs> those numbers and with Aaron Rodgers, they're in the Packers' favor. But, but they don't pay Cutler millions and millions of dollars a year because he's a horrible quarterback. <laughs> well, they, 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 would, they would rather not be paying him that much right now, but they decided to at one point. Uh, uh, I, you know, I, I've never been able able to get into the the hatred of certain teams in sports. Yeah, you know, that's one of that's one of the least things I like about sports is rivalries and making it personal and it's and it's sort of like, you know, everybody that supports the Bears are are bums and 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 but we support our team and and that's because we're great people. <laughs> and, and and I hate I hate just the the emotional side of it. But <laughs> But seriously, there is no one really thinks that we're not we're going to lose this game. Now that can be a problem. <laughs> yeah. That can, it can be a problem to look past any team, and and uh, but no one really thinks we're going to lose this game. And, and we don't often agree, Kevin. Lott, in, but in addition to the, the things that the, Kevin said, uh, that argue for the Bears to have a chance, new coach, home game. <laughs> There are, you know, Packer weaknesses. Uh, no Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, their best uh, available receiver. has got a bad shoulder. How are you going to catch the ball with a bad shoulder? The the, the, the offensive line, uh, four out of the five guys were dinged up during the, uh, the uh, exhibition season. They haven't... Uh, they haven't played together. Uh, the special teams are still a huge mess. They got nobody who can return the ball. The punter is is had an awful exhibition season. Saying all those things, <laughs> and I think the fact that the Bears have lost 17 out of 21 argues that you know, it's win. time for a, right. for a change. Saying all that, in professional sports, NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, the team with the best athletes wins almost all the time. Packers clearly have the best athletes, up and down, maybe with one exception, uh, tight end. And and the, if the Packers lose, people people in Wisconsin, people people in Wisconsin people in Wisconsin since the Packers have gotten better are spoiled. As someone who grew who grew up rooting for the Buffalo Bills back in the Jack Kemp era, you don't you do you do not and still does not Kemp obviously you do you do not know. You people in Wisconsin who've grown up bleeding green and gold really do not understand how lucky you are that we can be having this conversation at this level. If the if the Bills finish the year at 500, I'm going to be a real happy guy. We don't care. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, as you heard, Hillary Clinton was in Milwaukee on Thursday, and her visit came just days after her campaign aides admitted to the New York Times that they hadn't yet done a good enough job of humanizing her for the voters. Rick Horowitz saw that story, of course, but he also remembers a very similar story months ago, and others even before that. If nothing else, Rick figures Hillary's handlers deserve all sorts of credit for persistence. Rick. Hillary base unit to Hillary remote unit one. Do you read me, Hillary remote one? Do you? Okay, what do you got for me? How soon till she's on? Okay, here's what we need. Uh, warm and personal up to six, please. Copy that. Okay, yeah, uh, it's good. And a bit more accessible today. Unit two, do you read me? Yeah, accessible up to five, please. Uh, 
No, kill the rope. No roping reporters anymore. No, she's fine with it. She's okay with it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Remote one, you've got the humor app installed. Yeah. Give me uh, appreciative chuckles on shuffle play and maybe a couple of straight from the heart guffaws. Okay. Yeah. The ones her friends are always saying she's got. Yeah, sure. One early, one late. There's plenty. And uh, candor up to three, please. Yeah. Lawyer override still running. Good. Fine. Now, uh, shares your concerns. Where are we with shares your... What? No, dial it down. You want to blow out the authenticity circuits? Come on. Seven max. Don't even think of nine. Okay. You got it under control now? You sure? Okay. Where are we on spontaneity? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, we promised uh, she'd have opportunities for spontaneity. Remote one, talk to me. Uh-huh. No, I don't like it. Too late. First spot up, no later than uh, 120, 125. 10 seconds, tops. Yeah, and uh, second spot up at what? Uh, 1410, 1420? Hold it for maybe 20? Okay, for 15, sure. All right, yeah, and uh, just those two. You don't want to push your luck. She's not Bill, you know. Or Trump, right. Hey, you go to war with the candidate you've got, right? And she's who? I said, okay, look, intro's wrapping up. It's showtime, people. All units confirm go. All primary settings confirm go. Secondary settings. Emergency settings. Okay, folks, let's do this. Hillary Stump speech B, 291. Cue the music in five, four, three, two, one. And we're on. Well, thanks, Rick, and thank you so very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend.